All right, everybody. It is the top of the hour, uh, so I want to be respectful of everybody's time, and we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, this evening's Parent and Family Panel Webinar Wednesday session. Uh, for everybody who's who's logging in from, from coast to coast all across the country, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, tonight's going to be cool. Tonight's going to be a, a good one. We have some, some phenomenal parent and family members of current MSU students who are here to kind of share their experiences with you in terms of their engagement with Montana State University, how they went through the college search process with their students, and, and eventually how they ended up landing here at, at Montana State. So before we get into introducing them and before we get into our, our Q&A session with, with our parent and family panelists, uh, again, I just want to say thank you all so much for being here. I see that folks are still logging in. We'll make sure that everybody gets caught up uh, and gets all the information that they need. Um, but to, to kick things off, I want to go ahead and cover uh, kind of some, some general housekeeping items. Uh, first off, technical and log, login information. Um, if any of you are out there and you see my lips moving, but you can't hear me speaking, which then you wouldn't be able to hear what I just said, um, we can have our, our attendees call in if you would like. We have all of our login information here on the screen. So you'll see our attendee webinar password, what the webinar number is should you need to call in, and then those numbers to call in as well. So uh, whether it's toll free or using the toll line, um, we wanna make sure that you, you have the opportunity to hear from these parent and family panelists uh, to, to pick up some tips, and some tips and tricks from the wisdom that they have to impart on you. So, uh, for any of you who are joining from across the country, if you all need to dip a little bit early tonight, for those that are going to log on a little bit later, or for anybody who registered that isn't able to join at all this evening, as with all of our webinars, we're going to be recording tonight's session, and we'll be posting that recording to our Webinar Wednesday homepage uh, tomorrow afternoon. We'll process first thing in the morning. We'll send out an email with the link to our Webinar Wednesday homepage, and that's where you can review the recording from tonight's session, in addition to any other sessions that you might be interested in reviewing, maybe for the second time if you joined us earlier, or if you're looking to just pick up some new information. We've done webinars throughout the year on everything from how to pay for school for students, living on campus, uh, student engagement opportunities. And then we have two more webinars that are coming up towards the end of this year. Uh, next week for when we bring the students back in, we're gonna be doing a life outside the classroom session. And then for all of you, uh, parent and family members, students alike, uh, for those of you who have chosen that MSU is going to be your landing spot for your university experience, on May 8th, I want to give a particular plug. We're going to be doing an admitted student celebration webinar um, for, our, for our students that are going to help kind of connect students the way that we're hoping to have you, parent and family members, connect with one another tonight. So that link is uh, there on the website, but if you all uh, get to montana.edu and just search Webinar Wednesday, then you'll find all of the recordings that, of the sessions that we've done throughout the year. Uh, a little further technical support. Uh, for those of you who have joined us for our webinars throughout the year, you know that we normally have a full squad of our admissions staff that's on hand to help answer your questions throughout the evening through the Q&A feature. Um, we're running a little bit short tonight. Um, we have most of our admissions counselor staff is actually out on the road right now doing recruitment efforts. Minnesota, across Montana, we've wrapped up Chicago, we've wrapped up Las Vegas, and we're getting ready to go to Seattle as well. So our team is all over the country right now recruiting Bobcats, but uh, we do have two of our phenomenal all-star admissions counselors on hand this evening. We've got Anna and Emily that are gonna be engaging in that Q&A feature, and they'll be helping answer any questions that you all have throughout the evening, providing links, providing answers to your questions. Um, but then also for those thematic questions that keep coming up throughout the evening, we're keeping track of those. When, when many of you registered for tonight's session, you submitted questions or topics that you hoped would be covered. For anything that comes in kind of repetitively throughout the evening, we're gonna set those aside and we're gonna have our parent and family members answer questions that have come in live this evening towards the end of the session, roughly the last like 15 minutes of tonight's session. So um, just to make sure that everyone knows where the Q&A feature is, if you all, uh, there's two different kind of engagement features. There's a chat feature and there's a Q&A feature. The Q&A feature in WebEx is a lot easier for our admissions counselors to manage in terms of providing timely answers and accurate answers to specific questions. 
And so in your WebEx, if you have the opportunity, if y'all wouldn't mind doing me a solid and go down into that bottom right hand corner, you're going to th see three dots. And where you see those three dots, you'll be able to click on that and you'll see the Q&A feature uh, pop up. I thought this would be kind of fun for you all to tell us where you're coming from. Um, when I connected with our parent and family members that are serving as panelists earlier this week, I let them know that as of Monday of this week, we had representation from 40 of the 50 states in terms of where people had registered from. Um, and so if you wouldn't mind just to get comfortable with that Q&A feature, uh, go ahead and, and find that Q&A with those three uh, dots in the bottom right hand corner and tell us what state you're logging in from. I'd be really interested to see at the end of this um, where we have folks joining us from uh, and how many different states we have represented. So thank you so much for doing that. All right, moving forward. Uh, I want to introduce myself real briefly. Um, for, for many of you, I'm, I'm sure that this is not necessarily a familiar face. Uh, for those of you who I haven't had the opportunity to engage with in some form or fashion throughout the year, my name is Anders Groseth, and I have the privilege of working as the Associate Director for Recruitment in the Office of Admissions here at Montana State University. Uh, I'm a real person. I'm sure many of you have received emails from me, whether it's about these webinars or um, you know, taking steps on your students' admissions checklist or anything like that. Uh, but I have the best gig on campus because I get to do stuff like this. I get to travel around the country and engage with students who are interested in Montana State. I have a wonderful opportunity to engage with a lot of our students who are current Bobcats through our student ambassador programs. And then I get to do stuff like this where I get to help navigate from the parent and family side of things, your, your process as well. So I, I really, uh, like I said, I have the best gig on campus. My background with Montana State University, I'm from Bozeman, born and raised. Uh, my, my folks' house is just a couple of blocks from campus. I ended up choosing Montana State University when I was going through my college search. I ended up being here for four years, graduated in 2008 with our liberal studies degree, and then I've been working in our Office of Admissions ever since then. So I'm sort of a lifer. I could never find my reason to get out of here, um, and it's been a good fit for me in the long run. So. Um, as you're looking at the screen right now, one thing I did want to uh, bring attention to is, and, and show respect for, is your role as parents. Um, the role of a parent really never stops, and, and that's so important to us. We take that notion of family and support very seriously here at Montana State, and I hope that you'll have an opportunity to kind of get that feel as you're engaging with our panelists this evening. Um, but what I want to bring to your attention is that bottom right-hand picture that you see. Um, that's me a couple of years ago when the Bobcats played in the national championship football game down in Frisco, Texas. Uh, me being an idiot and who is behind me making sure that I'm minding my P's and Q's, that's my dad. Um, my dad still looks after me each and every day. Um, he was actually a, a member of MSU staff and faculty when I was in school at Montana State. Um, and so he had this uh, kind of like guiding force and, and still does. Um, and so I just want to Pay note to that. I want to. I want to thank you all for for the role that you all play in your students' lives um, through the college search, throughout their university experience, and well beyond. Because I know that that never stops. So shout out to you all. So that's a little bit about me um, for tonight's presentation. I want to give you all a little bit of an overview about sort of some of the themes and topics that we're hoping to cover this evening. Um, I want to have you all have an opportunity to hear from our panelists first and foremost. Have them introduce themselves and tell a little bit about their experience thus far with Montana State University. Um, we'll get to this point, but they're going to tell you a little bit about where they're coming from, who their students are, and what they're studying, and what they're, uh, what they're active with on campus, and a little bit about that YMSU. Uh, what was it about this place that took them from being prospective students, as many of you are in that, that, that circumstance right now, to being enrolled students, to being active students, and kind of building that culture at Montana State. And then based on the questions that you all submitted when you were registering for tonight's session, we sort of thematically broke those questions into um, sort of chunks, essentially. So we wanted to have a parent perspective of just the college search and decision process. Uh, some of your students have already decided on Montana State, and that's, that's an honor for us that we're going to be able to welcome them to campus. But I would be a fool to think that every single one of you who's joining has a student that's fully dedicated to Montana State. I know that that college search still continues well into May, sometimes into June and July. Um, and so I just want to kind of have a little discussion about that search and decision process. Then the transition process. Your students have been super successful throughout their high school careers, 
but college is a little bit different of a beast. And so I want to talk about some of that transition, the successes, the challenges that, that our parent and family panelists, that their students have faced, and, and some things that you can at least have on your radar for, for support. And then support. I just mentioned that. Um, how to support your students without overstepping. You know, the university experience is, is truly that transformative experience towards adulthood for a lot of students. Um, but they need you. They need all of us in their corner to be successful. And so some of the some of the experiences that our panelists have have had throughout their students' times at Montana State and kind of how they found their comfort zone with being engaged without overstepping. So I want to talk about MSU services and resources. Um, MSU is a very supportive place, whether that's academic support, cultural support, learning support, or social support. Um, and that's something that, that nobody is blind to here at MSU. Everybody needs some sort of backing, and I want to talk about some of those services that are offered. And then that life after the final farewell. Uh, for some of you, this might be the first college student that you're sending off to their university experience. On the flip side, some of you, this might be the last student that you're waving goodbye to before uh, before em uh, entering that kind of empty nest transition. What can you do? You know, what, what can you expect? What can you kind of game plan for as you're dropping your student off here in August um, and and taking those next steps, uh, those first next steps without them living in the house? So, and then at, at the end, as I mentioned, we'll have time for a Q and A uh, of your questions that have been um, submitted this evening as well. So that's kind of the logistical side of things, your technical support, kind of an overview of this evening and who I am as the host. But I am not going to try and, and dive in too much this evening. I want to shine the, the spotlight. I want to highlight our parent and family panelists. And so to kick off, um, oh, I forgot I threw this in there. For some of you, this might be actually an introduction to Montana State University. Um, and so for those of you who maybe haven't joined on some of our webinars thus far this year, I just want to do a brief overview about who we are as a campus. You know, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, families that registered from all across the country. And this will show you a little bit about who we are as a university. Um, our goal for this fall semester was that we were going to be the first university in the state of Montana to ever reach 17,000 students. As you can see, we ended up 22 short, which absolutely drives me crazy. Um, if I had hair, I would be pulling it out at this point because we were that close. Um, but something that we're extremely proud of. Uh, we have been able to build our students' enrollment so that we are the largest university in the state of Montana. Um, this year's incoming first year class, that 3,634 uh, 3, students, as you can see, that's the third largest freshman class that our, that our university has ever welcomed. But if you look one line below that, that 16,978 students, that's the largest Montana State University has ever been. We set our record enrollment this year. And that is one thing that I want to pay particular attention to just briefly, is that we have been able to grow through continued success, not one-time success. Our retention rates are as high as they have ever been so that our students are not just choosing Montana State University as first-year students, but they're returning to us as second-year, third-year, all the way to graduation students. Um, this year's incoming first-year class was extremely exciting for Montana State. It's the first time in our university's history that we were represented by at least one student from all 50 states across the country. That had never happened here before. And so for those of you who might be coming from the East Coast, the South, the Pacific Northwest, your students are not going to be alone. There's this great community of collaborative students that are going to be here to welcome them initially and then support them all the way throughout their college career. So again, that's just a little bit about who we are by the numbers. And then as your students are choosing their academic programs, this gives you like a, a little bit of an academic snapshot about the university in total. This, will, uh, this is actually from our fall of 22 year, but this gives you a good representation about the academic colleges that our students will end up declaring into. We have over 250 different majors, so there is a lot to choose from. But those 250 different majors are organized into eight different academic colleges that really provide opportunities and support for your students' academic interests, regardless of what they might be. If your student wants to be like me and be a liberal studies major or go into health sciences or engineering or business or anything in between, there is something for everybody here at Montana State. And then for some of you out there, I'm sure you have a student that's considering Montana State that push comes to shove, they don't really know what they're going to do. They don't really know what they want to study or major in once they get to Montana State. 
I want to um, bring your attention to that 704 students, that very last triangle over there on the right hand side of the screen. We have a phenomenal program called University Studies that allows a student to enter into Montana State having not declared a major. And then through our advising commons, they can identify a major that works best for them. So if you are a parent or family member that's that's joining us this evening and that's one of your apprehensions is I don't really know what my student is going to do. That's OK. We, we see that traditionally it's in between 15 and 20 percent of our students join MSU, have declared a major by the end of their first year, but didn't declare one once they got here. So again, kind of just an overview. So so now next up, the all stars of your show. The, these are our parent and family panelists, uh, as you can see, joining us from all across the country. Um, and so I want to have them have an opportunity to introduce themselves a little bit. Uh, again, like I was saying earlier, where are they from? How did MSU get on their students' radar? And you know, what are they studying? Where are they living? Um, and what was it about MSU that was one of the factors that had them had them choose to be a Bobcat in the long run? So um, you see, we have a combo uh, joining us this evening, all the way from Virginia. Uh, Paul and Melissa, do you guys want to take a moment to introduce yourselves? Sure, we'd love to. Thanks for having us on very much. So, uh, yes, we have been in Leesburg, Virginia for about 27 years. Uh, however, uh, last three, two, three years, we're transitioning from uh, Leesburg to actually Ennis, Montana and uh, Florida Keys. So we're kind of all over the country. Uh, but the reason we came to Montana State is we've traveled out west a number of times. Uh, about six years ago, we took a family trip out to Big Sky. Uh, we're a very outdoors oriented family and decided to take a trip through campus and our boys fell in love with it. Uh, we currently have a freshman and a sophomore, two boys at Montana State currently, and they love it. And I would tell you, one of the things that really attracted to us to Montana State as the boys finished off their, their high school careers, if you will, is we spent time in Bozeman and to a T, whether it was someone that was going to Montana State or a graduate of Montana State, they all had very, very positive things to say about the school and the experience that they've had. And that's all the way from folks who met in Ennis, Montana, to students that were attending Montana State, to our architect right now in Ennis, who's building for us that went to Montana State. So just a very good reputation. And one of the things we loved was the fact that Bozeman is so accessible to the outdoors. There is so much for those students to do that they don't get to do if they're in a university that's in the middle of a city. Uh, just by the way of our boys, they love fishing, they love climbing, they love hiking, skiing. Um, and that's one of the things that that balance between school and be able to get outdoors and, and blow some steam off and have a good balance in life is something that uh, we appreciated. And our boys really appreciate now that they're attending Montana State. Awesome, cool. So uh, for, for our attendees that are joining from across the country, uh, I said students continue to choose MSU. That's why our retention rates are so high. Families can continue to choose Montana State as well. That's pretty cool. So uh, Doug, how about you? You wanna go? Yes, thanks. Um, I'm Doug Gordon, Golden, Colorado, uh, originally from Chicago. Um, you know, your question, what, what initially drew you to Montana State, I don't remember. <laughs> But um, I have a son that graduated MSU in 22, and I have a son who's now finishing up sophomore year. Um, I'll echo what Paul said as the outdoors for the, for my boys was a huge factor. Um, my youngest is a fly fisherman um, at every opportunity. He's also a skier. My oldest doesn't know anything about fishing, but he loves uh, skiing and ice climbing. I didn't know ice climbing was a thing. Um, but um, I, so I don't know how it got on our radar, but the impression that uh, I think all of us had when we visited the campus was a couple of things. The size, it's a nice size school. It's not tiny, it's not huge. I went to school in Boulder, Colorado. It's a big, big school. Uh, I tell my wife, if I were to choose today, I'd probably be at MSU. I, for me, that's a nice size. Um, but the town also, I would say is a factor. It's a nice town. It's got all the amenities you want. It's got great restaurants and um, we visit probably more than my son wants me to, but, but we enjoy it. Well, you can tell him that sometimes, you know, students never leave their hometown. So my parents visit me more than I like to, so. 
Anders has a great story about his dad. Uh, if you have a chance at uh, orientation, that's a, you have a great presentation on that. Yeah, that's your, for everybody joining us this evening, that's your carrot at the end of the stick. I got a ridiculous story about my parents. They're awesome, but they are ridiculous. So uh, last but not least, joining us all the way from the land of a thousand lakes, Leslie. Yes, well, welcome everyone. Um, so we uh, were similar in that we took our kids out on an RV trip um, out west right before my son's freshman year in high school. And then we actually had uh, a fantastic um, college and career planning at our high school. And one of the counselors had recently done a trip um, out to the Western schools and had visited Montana. And I think around my son's sophomore year, she's like, Ben, if you wanna be an engineer, you have to check out Montana State. Um, so basically that was it. He had been out, visited the mountains. Um, so that's my oldest son. He graduated um, last May. And he went out, fell in love with it, fell in love with the norm building that was just going to open, I think, his freshman year. Um, love the outdoors, love the engineering program. And then I have a daughter who is a sophomore. And so we did a mother daughter trip uh, three years in a row out to visit Ben. And it ended up being the only school that she applied to. So uh, we were very happy and very lucky that she chose it. And um, it's been great. And again, like everyone, we're from Minnesota, so we have, you know, all the lakes and outdoor stuff. So it was a natural transition that way. Um, but as far as the kids majors and everything, it worked out perfect too. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I love those, you know, the, the, the variety of answers of, you know, took a road trip, no idea how it ended up, you know, MSU ends up on on folks radars in a myriad of different ways. And, and I think it it sort of is representative of who we are as a campus, who we are as a community. You, you know, Doug, you mentioned that the campus itself, we, we take a lot of pride in the fact that we're the largest university in the state of Montana. But shoot, you break down the borders of our state. We're not very big, very many other places. We're more that mid-sized university. So if you have a student out there who's really uh, interested, excited, and energized by that large campus experience, we have that stuff for you. Division One athletics, students from all 50 states, research opportunities. But if you're a student who needs that smaller campus attention and support, we check those boxes too. So the same can be said about Bozeman, you know, wonderful cultural uh, opportunities with live music and arts communities and restaurants, but we live in an outdoor playground at the same time. So kind of something for everybody. So thank you all for doing that. I appreciate it. So let's go ahead and dive in with our questions now for the evening. Um, I, I know I gave an overview of these, but we're gonna kind of go through section by section and we're going to start with that college search and decision process. Um, Leslie, you actually just mentioned something that I thought was interesting that, you know, MSU was the only school that, that was applied to. Um, but for really any of you, um, you know, for students that are in the throes of this college search and decision process currently, I wonder if any of you have any insight on the number of schools that your students either applied to, visited, or both, and, and kind of how you navigated that process in terms of building and then trimming that list. Any of you have any, you know, particular insight on that? Well, we our boys were exactly the same as Leslie's. Literally, Montana State was the only school they applied to. Um, our oldest, he that's all he wanted. He loved the business program, especially the entrepreneurship program. Um, but for him is the fly fishing. He is an avid fly fisher. He works at a fly shop now and he literally just got his guiding certificate. So he's going to be doing that this summer. Um, and that's what he wanted to do. He, he, he's made such a good balance with that. Um, and then our youngest, we were like, you know, he wanted to go out there and we said, okay, you know, there's other schools out West. Like you want to go out West, there's Colorado, there's Wyoming, you know, let's go take some trips. And he's like, mom, I love it. He went and spent a couple times. And I think the clencher was when it was ESPN weekend, he went out there for the. <laughs> for the football game and he's just like I don't want to be anywhere else and which for us it was great because to have both of them together and they could lean on each other we we didn't yeah. want to argue with and that I would say one thing now I don't want to do a disservice because now we're talking about how great the outdoor outdoor uh activities are there but I, I would say 
one of the things that we experienced, we actually went on the tour and both of our sons are in business. My wife and I are both entrepreneurs and the business program at Montana State, which we can only speak to because our sons are involved, is phenomenal. The speakers, if you take a look at the website, you can see the speakers they have come through to talk to the students, which I think is extremely important. Uh, the professors that they have in that business department, and they may be attracted to Montana State because the outdoors too in the school, but they have some phenomenal uh, professors uh, with some very unique perspectives. So just the, the educational opportunities. I think both of our boys saw that and wanted to be a part of it. Very cool. Um, and Paul, anytime you want to sidetrack to highlight the academic quality, feel free <laughs> to do that. Feel free to do that. Sure. So. No, it's, it, the, I, especially the entrepreneurship program. Like I said, we can speak to that, but it's, I was blown away by how, how good it is at Montana State. And I'm excited to see what my, my boys are going to do once they graduate. Cool. Right on. Um, Let's see, uh, I, I, I think the Schlees actually also wanted to answer this question. Um, and, I, and I think you, you sort of have, but the, the things that stuck out about Montana State University, when it came down to it, how involved, this is a question that came in, how involved should a parent feel comfortable being in their student's college search and decision process? You know, this is, this is really that, that opportunity for the students specifically, but where were your all's comfort zone in terms of engaging with that ultimate decision process? I, I'll go first. I uh, have done quite a bit in junior achievement, as I said, being an entrepreneur and talking to the teachers uh, when I first go to speak to classes, one of the, the main pressures students have is a lot of pressure from parents on where to attend the university. And I'm a big believer that the university does not necessarily make the person. It's an individual that's going to attend that university, experience it, set their own goals, make their choices to, to achieve success in life. So my wife and I are more off hands when it comes to choosing university. That's what I did. Personally, I know she, my wife was the same, uh, but we feel once they're a senior, they're going to college. It's time to let them take over the steering wheel, provide guardrails and move forward. Awesome. Uh, Leslie or, or Doug, any uh, any additional kind of experiences that you had, you know, when you were in the in the throes of it? No, we were the same. We really let our kids um, drive the decision. If they would ask for an opinion, we would give it. Our oldest son, Ben, who was in the engineering program, was down to Montana State and um, another school that was um, kind of strictly engineering. And we kind of talked to him about just the great um, amount of things that he could do at Montana State outside of uh, just the, the studying and the engineering part. And he was lucky. Um, one thing we love that both my kids were involved in is the research. And I agree with the Schlees. It is, uh, there is so much out there um, at Montana State for the kids to take advantage of um, cool. inside the classroom, especially. I mean, it's been amazing for our kids. So awesome. Um, so th this next question, actually, I think it, it sort of, it sort of straddles the, the next two sessions or the new, next two sections from that, that college search and decision process to that transition from high school to college. Um, we get this question all the time in the office and, um, and Doug or anybody, I'd be interested. Uh, the question that came in is it essentially reflects that the student really fell in love with Bozeman and MSU happened to be here. Uh, and there was concern about, you know, what's my student's ability to focus going to be once they get to Montana State. Did, did any of your students kind of, um, how did they navigate that? Wow, there's so much to do here in this community, but the focus is their, their education, their academic pursuits, and, and the balancing act that, that kind of goes along with that. I think that's a real concern. There's a lot of distractions. Um, I think Paul mentioned you can you need to blow off steam sometimes, so those distractions can be good. You just you have to balance that. I feel very lucky that despite my son's uh, living to ski and fly fish and things like that, that they recognize that this whole deal of being in Bozeman starts to fall apart if if you're not focused on academics. So I I don't know. I, you know they're not perfect, but I do feel like they struck the right balance. Uh, my son did say, um, I, I don't know what time of year it was, maybe February. I said, how many days skiing do you have in? And he, had, he said, 32. 
said, okay, let's talk about GPA. How are your <laughs> grades? And he had, you know, four A's and a B. I'm like, all right, well, head up on powder days. I get it. You so. earned it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll never forget uh, after a, we'll call it a challenging semester that I had when I was here at Montana State. Uh, my dad sat me down and I remember it was one sentence. He said, you know, they don't have to invite you back, right? I'm like, oh, okay. Geez, I guess if I do want to stay here, I got to I gotta hold my end of the deal. So, um, well, let's go through that, uh, no pun intended, but let's go through that transition uh, from the, the college search to, you know, finding that balance of the workload, the roommates, the social life, and everything else along those lines. Um, what ways or what resources did your students uh, seek out or be introduced to that helped them kind of navigate this these first couple of steps on their own? Um, Doug, do you want to do you want to speak to that about you know how is it that four A's and a B can match with thirty two days of skiing? You know what what was that um, tips and tricks? I guess I I well he's a very disciplined kid so that that came from an internal but. Um, you know, he did introduce himself to professors and at orientation, I think maybe we talk about that later, but at orientation, we heard a tip that the students should just go introduce themselves to a professor. I think that that connection and that engagement with another human being um, makes it not so easy to be anonymous with C minuses in the back of the class. Maybe that gets back to the size of the campus and the uh, student body as well. Um, but I, I would say um, friends too, you know, uh, if you're friends with people in your major, or at least know of them, you can call them up. It's hard to do though for an 18 year old. What 18 year old wants to go introduce himself to a professor? But I, you know, I guess I would say, if you can encourage your kids, just do it. Just make an appointment, just say, hi, here's who I am. Here's who I'm from, you know, where I'm from. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to jump in real quick if I could mention something. I think the communication Montana State has with parents is absolutely exceptional. All the way through, hey, this is the time of year your student may be dropping class. It's not unusual. Don't freak out. Things of that nature. And then some of the things that you you guys do in, in order uh, to set up these students for success coming into a new lifestyle where you have a roommate, the orientation that you guys have, the outdoor programs, they're huge, and I would encourage everyone on the call, if their student goes, to get involved in, involved with those programs that you do have. Awesome. Um, perfect, perfect transition. Uh, Leslie, one of the things that that you had thrown your name down on uh, with one of the questions was about roommates. You know, for a lot of our students, this is the first time that they've shared a bathroom, that they shared a bedroom. Um, and so this question was, um, my student is nervous about living with a roommate. Any advice that you can give from a parent's perspective on navigating a first-time roommate relationship? Um, Leslie, why'd you, why'd you throw your name down on yeah. that? Yeah, so, well, I've had uh, multiple kids in college. None of them knew their roommates. And, uh, you know, they all, I had two boys and a daughter, and, you know, they all kind of freak out. But I think it's kind of a rite of passage to get the random roommate and learn how to, just learn how to deal with someone you don't know. Um, I always kind of told them, to not expect that person to be their best friend and you really the most important thing is to learn how to coexist with someone and you may end up being great friends but if you don't that's okay too um and i know a lot of people on kind of the facebook page you know they worry that their kids haven't connected with their roommate yet or they don't know and one thing i would say about that is don't push them like let the kids make connections when they're ready a lot are really busy now with being a senior and you know preparing for AP exams and graduation and all that stuff. So um, I was more would be a sounding board and I never wanted to add fuel to the fire if I knew there was something brewing because they are experiencing their first kind of transition to adulthood and they need to figure it out and they usually can. And if not, there's resources on campus that can help. So I think from my perspective, it was better to just um, kind of be there as a sounding board um but really let them figure it out and it it all turns out okay nice awesome um another one of the questions that uh, yeah, um uh for the schlees you all put your name on this one um but really you all are going to have some insight into this I, so i'd be uh, i'd be curious to hear your your perspectives um 
Was your student welcomed at MSU? My family is coming in from out of state and I don't have a social circle established in Bozeman. Um, that connectivity, you know, maybe it's the roommate that is ending up being their best friend, but uh, how did your students and how did you help your students find those ways to, to build that social circle when they maybe didn't know that many people here? I know, you know, siblings, siblings are involved, but how did their social circle start to build those support systems? It was interesting. They, uh, our boys are polar opposites of each other. So we had two different experiences. Our oldest, um, definitely more of the introvert, um, very much into himself um, with his sports and things. Um, so we were a little nervous when he went off, um, but he went to the orientation and this was like the first time he'd ever been away um, on his own with his own peers. And we were expecting like maybe a call because we came in, we did not do the parent orientation, but we came in for the weekend um, and we were on call. Like if he called us, we didn't hear from him until the morning to pick him up. He had such an amazing time. He met so many wonderful friends and he just put himself out there and he found his people. And it just, he came out of his shell and he's just had the most amazing experience. And his roommate um, didn't know him. I mean, they just met that day. They talked maybe once, they're boys, they nah, bring the microwave, whatever. Um, and they did not, like, they weren't the best of friends, but they coexisted very well. They were, one was an engineer, Jonah was business. They ran in different circles but they got along well. Um, so living together was great and he really enjoyed that. Um, our youngest, it was more of the social butterfly. So he got to orientation and the same thing. He really, you know, met a lot of great people, had a blast um, and, you know, got to meet his roommate and him and his roommate are very, very close and stuff. So they, for us, we just, we kind of let them go you, you kind of, they will, they will find their people. It may not be right away. It may be a month or so. Um, but when you give them the encouragement and you are their sounding board and you're their guardrail and you listen, um, it's really amazing to see them shine, um, on their own and they, they, they will do it. Cool. That's awesome. Um, for for everybody, I am keeping an eye on the clock and I want to make sure that we have time to answer some of the live questions as well. So we're going to go to this next section of the parent and family involvement, uh, being supportive without overstepping, you know, letting students, you know, in some in some circumstances make those make those failures, you know, fail forward and what challenges have been faced. So um, one question that uh, that came up in particular, uh, Leslie, if you wouldn't mind managing this one, um, what are some key ways that your parenting style has adjusted since your students left for college? Yeah, so I will say um, my big thing is like back off, like you can guide them, but you can't solve their problems for them. And I'll just jump back. It was a great thing for me to go to orientation because you learn about all the services and where they can go. So if they do call you with a problem, you can be like, oh, hey, I remember hearing about this particular service. So I know we all want to stay involved and we're, we were probably all really involved all through high school, but it really is time to just back off and let them navigate. I mean, if it's obviously like a health or something where they really need you, by all means, jump in. But if it's just run of the mill stuff with professors, classes, friends, um, it's really their time to shine and, and grow up. Cool. Right on. Um, Doug, I wonder if you, you didn't put your name on this one, so this is a, a little bit of a, a wild card for you. Um, I wonder if you could speak to anything, and, and I'm sure that this happened to some extent. Uh, did you see anything in particular that your student struggled with after starting at MSU? And where did you find your pocket or the comfort to kind of help them guide through that challenge? You know, we didn't see much of that. Um... I, we're lucky, right? I think um, roommate, there were a couple of roommate issues. Um, I don't know if it was Leslie that said, keep your expectations low, you know, don't, that maybe they're not going to be your best friend. And um, 
and maybe talk with them about that prior to things that might come up. Um, I think uh, grades, um, sometimes if you're doing very well in high school, straight A's, and you get into a difficult um, major and you're used to A's and A pluses and you get a B, um, I'll speak about my daughter. <laughs> she struggled with that. She'd never seen a B in her life. I celebrated when I got a B, but my kids are different. Um, so, you know, those types of things, but I would say we're lucky in our case, there are bumps in the road, um, not, uh, not terribly extreme, um, but there's a lot of help. There's so much help these days at, at schools. I don't know all your programs that are there, but you, I guess the biggest thing is those kids have to reach out if they're struggling. Hopefully they call you as a parent, um, but if not, reach out to someone else. You know, Doug, I'm really glad that you actually just uh, threw in, you know, the, the services that we have. Uh, for either Anna or Emily, who's engaging in that uh, Q&A feature, when we were building our questions doc, at the very bottom of it, I included a couple of links, and some of them are links that you can provide families from our um, Alan Yarnell Center for Student Success. Uh, I got an email earlier today about uh, a parent who might be joining us this evening who had some apprehensions about their students' study habits, their time management skills, and we have support services that if your student has some of those, um, those uphill challenges when it comes to the classroom, we will make sure that they have a good support system, a good structure around them to, to ensure that they succeed. So. Um, the last question on, on this section that I want to uh, spend a quick minute with particularly, um, and uh, either uh, Paul or Melissa, you put your name on this one. Uh, the question was, my student is an introvert. How do I help suggest things for them to get involved with without being overbearing or pushy? Um, the, uh, what is it, uh, Catpalooza Day? Yeah. That was... Um, a big one for, for Jonah, uh, who was our introvert. And he made sure that he went there and he just walked and hit every tent to see everything that was available and signed up for things. And that's how he, he met people. Yeah. And another thing, and it's different, which it, um, took us by surprise because we never thought he would ever do it, but he rushed for a fraternity. Okay. And he did that. He did it with Sigma Chi um, because he's like, I don't know anybody and this is how I can meet people. And he just liked that fraternity, especially because they were very high on your grades. You have to have a 3.0 to stay in the fraternity, which keeps his grades there. He loves it. He loves the brotherhood um, and everything that they do for the university as well. So. My suggestion is if your kid is an introvert, that is a very big day if with all the different clubs and sports and activities. Your child, they need to put themselves out there. Nobody's going to come into their dorm room and say, let's go do this. If they want to have a successful career and a life at MSU, they have to take their life in their own hands and they have to do it and they will. Yeah. And I think also too, uh, Leslie and Doug had mentioned it, when you speak with your students prior to them going off to university, it's a time for them to be uncomfortable and do things that they haven't done. If they're not used to introducing themselves to people, it's time to start doing that. It's time to hop in a club, even though you aren't sure, hop in, join the club, see if it's something you want to do. Yeah. yeah. You have to advocate for themselves. Yep. I, I'll again quote something my dad has always told me. He always says the two most important questions anybody can ask is, can I join you or will you join me? Um, and I think that like that is something that is uncomfortable for some students, but just that step of, hey, can I sit down with you and have lunch? Or, hey, do you want to come to the basketball game with me? It goes a million miles uh, in terms of, you know, just making yourself approachable and comfortable. So, um, all right. So the next section, uh, trying to be mindful of time, is these support services and resources. Um, Emily, I saw that you put in those links uh, from the Alan Yarnell Center for Student Success for our MSU 101 program and some of the academic support that we have. But uh, support goes far beyond the classroom here at Montana State University. And so um, I wanna uh, spend some time talking about, you know, some different questions and circumstances that have come up. Um, Leslie, you threw your name down on the question of, how accessible are professors outside of the classroom, especially those who teach large courses? Um, 
Yeah, I just wrote they're they're very accessible. Um, and it kind of goes to Doug's point. The kids should go down the first day and introduce themselves and show up at office hours. Um, the and teachers will be available outside of office hours if you email them. I think kids just have to remember that these professors are human and they don't want your kids to fail. Um, and they actually appreciate it if kids reach out and try and get to know them and show an interest. So we've never had any issues with any professors. Um, they've all been wonderful. So cool. Yeah, for, for those of you who, who might be just, um, you know, joining into this Bobcat family in our MSU community, it's one of the, in my opinion, the most important policies that Dr. Cruzado, our president, when she got to campus, she now requires that every professor who teaches a class has to have posted office hours for any class that they teach. And that just makes them more accessible that they're not just here to instruct or do research, but they're here to engage with students and help them through that academic process. So President Cruzado has been awesome for the student experience uh, throughout her tenure at Montana State. So um, let's see, Doug, a question that you threw your name on for this section, uh, and we've sort of like circled around this. So I, I apologize if we're being repetitive here, um, but I'm concerned that my student will not ask for help either inside or outside of the classroom. Should I reach out for help on their behalf? Um, can you can you tell a little bit about why you threw your name down on that question? <laughs> I don't remember why I put my name there, but um, I uh, I see a link on our, our sheet here. Hopefully we can put that link on the Q&A. Um, yeah. But the Dean of Students Office, um, we talked earlier about all the resources available, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but that might be a parent's first call is to the um, Office of the Dean and Matt. You know, one of the things that we love about the school is that connection. Somehow there's a connection to parents. I don't know how you guys do it, um, but I, I feel part of that campus, and I, I feel like if I were to call with a problem, I feel like people are going to be mo uh, mobilized in Bozeman. I'm 700 miles away. As a parent, I'm, I tend to overthink things and worry. Um, it's nice to know that you can call. I, and I, I, like I said, I do believe they would mobilize or do what they can. I think there was a discussion about grades, I think, on one of these questions. Uh, by law, you can't share my son's grades. I get that. But I think they emphasize, okay, if you're concerned about a call, we'll talk you through some options, even though we may not be able to share uh, grades. But um, uh, it's very evident to me and that, uh, that that MSU is there. How do, how do I say this? MSU is very aware that there's a parent connection to the whole campus. It's not just the students and the checks rolling in. There's the, the parents are part of that campus. Yeah, I, I I know I I at times sound cheesy when I say this, but the Bobcat family is a real thing. It, it's not just your students and it's not just graduates, but it's everybody who's involved in our campus. That includes you all as parent and family members, uncles, aunts, and siblings. That that's really important for us to have that connectivity. So, Doug, I'm glad that that that's come through for and you. So, can I throw in something really quick? Yeah. Um, there's also um, a Bobcat parents Facebook page, and that's really helpful too. And uh, there are so many parents if there may be people on that are on it already, but there are tons of questions that come up. Um, and there's always a parent ready to jump in, whether it's a parent in Bozeman who will be like, I can bring something to your kid or my daughter has a cavity. What's a good dentist? So, um, even just now utilizing social media, parents really have bonded with each other that way um, and helped each other out. So. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Yeah, that that parent and family Facebook page. Um, is is incredibly active and supportive. That's one of the things that I've always been really impressed about when I work with the Dean of Students Office and Aaron McDonald Peck, uh, who's one of the Associate Deans of Students. It's it's not a passive thing. It's a very active thing, and it's it's not anything that we're leading, but it's organic. It, it's really natural from parent and family members from all across the country. So I appreciate you plugging that because I I do think that that's a good resource. So, um, let's see. Anything else that I wanted to focus on here? I don't think so. Um, okay, so now we've gone through this college search process. They're identifying help. They're ready to join us here at Montana State. And now this is where you as a parent and family member go through this kind of like transition process of your own. And that's, that's the things that you wish you would have known after the final farewell. So, um, 
let's see, I, I just kind of want to give you all a time to tell about your experiences. You know, there were, there were questions that came in um, and I'll, I'll sp focus on some of them, but at the end of this, I just kind of want to uh, focus on how you navigated those first steps kind of that they were in that new ball game for you. Um, one of the questions that did come up that I know folks are interested in hearing about, um, and the Schlees, you put your name on this one, so I'm gonna throw this at you. Um, once the school year starts, how much should I try or expect to keep in touch with my student? What has your experience been with your kids? Um, different, different. Our oldest um, would call us literally three times a week, sometimes almost every day. Our youngest, we could go a month without hearing from him. He's just, <laughs> you know, um, so we we are still navigating that with our youngest on what to expect and he's definitely gotten better i think that first semester freshman year give your child some grace period they are on their own they're in school they're making every decision they have to now on their own from getting up on themselves and either eating or showering before class and managing classes and lectures and friends and maybe sports there's a lot. Um, so I think just that first semester freshman year could be a struggle with, you know, maybe not hearing from your kid, but you as a parent still, like I would just text, hey, how's your week going? I'll get a quick text back and I'm good with that. Um, and I think it's important when they do call to make it to make them want to call you again. Yeah. A lot of times it's it's so easy to fall in the trap of, hey, you dropped the class. What are you doing? Or you don't have a job yet or you don't you know it's so easy to get in that rut where you start parenting hard instead of saying hey how you doing that's awesome you know give them encouragement talk to them make them want to call you again yeah um one of the one of the things you know the the wanting to call again that engagement the parent and family program through the dean of students office i know we keep plugging this but they're they're just such a valuable teammate uh for you all and for us they have a resource that's on their website that is asking um it's essentially asking questions that have answers. It's not, hey, how was your day? Fine. But it was, what classes did you have today? What are your professor's names? Things that have specific answers so that, the, that students, and not to throw any shade at students, but they can't just give you the flat kind of uh, check a box answer, but they have to engage in that conversation. I think that helps them see the value of their own university experience and excited to talk about it. So definitely use that parent family resource. So. Um, Leslie, in this section for you, uh, what advice can you give a parent who isn't sure what to do with themselves once the house is, is student lit, once, uh, once all the students are out of the, out of the. Yes. Yeah, well, I saw the view? empty nester and I have four kids and three college, um, and one junior in high school, but every time one leaves, I feel like an empty nester. So I mourn, um, but I do a really good job in the fall of kind of pre-planning things and like starting a new hobby, get, grabbing coffee with friends, um, going to the high school football games and things like that. So I think if you think about it in advance when you're still like happy and your child hasn't left yet, it can really help just having your calendar a little bit full when they're gone. And then like who can say no to going to Bozeman? So definitely plan, um, you know, plan your visits. So you can, you know, get out there in the fall to hike and then the winter to ski and just kind of always have something to look forward to. Awesome. Yeah, the uh, uh, first trip to Bozeman, uh, Dean Kyrus, who's our Dean of Students, he's going to tell you, we really want you to come out in the fall to help your students move into the residence halls. We do want you to leave. And then we want you to come back parent family weekend off the top of my head. I believe parent family weekend is October 10th through the 12th. Um, and that's always a really fun celebration that kind of shows you as parent and family members what your students have gotten into once their wheels are moving, you know, once their university experience really starts. So, um, Doug, I'm going to start with you on on this one. And I actually want I want all of you to, to chime in on this, because I think that this is really important. You know, we've talked about the struggles that students can face and what have their challenges been. They're going to succeed, though. There, there's going to be a lot of highlights. And so, Doug, you put your name down. What about your students college or university experience has made you the most proud as a parent? Um, you know, my oldest son graduating, that's the most obvious answer, I guess, you know, per, um, persisting to get to graduation. It's kind of a long journey. Um, 
to see both kids independence. They're, they were generally independent at home, but you know, to drop off a kid and leave, uh, you worry as a parent, but uh, to see them do that and make some good decisions. And um, I, I um, one, one small story, my younger son last year, one of his friends um, had some issues and my son dropped what he was doing and, and, and brought that other kid in for some help. And, um, you know, <laughs> that, that was a big one, I guess, but uh, yeah, independence is huge. And um, that's, that's my answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome to have a student that will go to bat for somebody else. One of their peers. That's great. Um, Paul and Melissa, proud moments, proud parents lay it on us. I would say a couple and just to echo what Doug had mentioned, uh, our son is a sophomore and he had a, one of his buddies had a tragedy in the family and my son stepped up and, and took him out for the entire day fishing to get his mind off it and just talk to him about it. And uh, super proud of him for that. And also the fact that now as a sophomore, he has a really good work-life balance. When I say work school, I, I should say school, recreation, working, things of that nature. It's a really good balance. And our youngest, he's starting to get it now. We can start to, to see that he's starting to make some moves that he's understanding that it, it, it can't be uh, having fun all the time. You got to do some schoolwork, make sure you're keeping up with your clubs, fraternities, getting good grades, things of that nature. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. You want to say anything to add? Um, no, I think, I think that's it. I, I, you know, for me, I going back to when we originally, like what attracted us to MSU and that balance of being able to blow off some steam and I'll never forget you know, Jonah had had a, um, just, he had like three big exams in one day and he called me. He's like, he's like, mom, he's like, I'm going fishing. He's like, I've had such a stressful day. I need to get out on the water. And, you know, I think sometimes you, you see some of the kids who get stressed out, who don't, they're not used to this stress. They can turn to other things as a release, you know, drugs, alcohol, things like that. And when you see your kid, who's, you know, 20 years old, say, I need to go fish to blow off some steam. You know, I, I just, that was for me as a mother, it was a very proud, proud moment for me. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Leslie, I, I'm interested to hear your response as well. Yeah. So um, my oldest son, Ben, who graduated in May of 2023, um, he graduated um, in civil engineering and um, prior to Thanksgiving. So by Thanksgiving of 2022, he had multiple job offers and ended up staying and working for a firm in Bozeman. Um, so everything he did along the way from professional groups to internships, um, we are just so proud that it ended exactly how he wanted. He got his top job and he's still in Bozeman and he, he absolutely loves it. Um, and then with my daughter, um, I know you talked a little bit about all the undecided majors, which is what she went into school as, and she really took advantage um, her freshman year of the university studies program, and they did such a great job leading her. And so um, this year she declared her major, and since then she's dove in head first, and she's on a research project with a grad student. Um, she's um, just, she's managed that work-life balance really well, having now knowing her major and kind of what she needs to do in the next step. So. Cool. Yeah. That's my people right there. I was in university studies for two full years. Yeah, um, it was, there is no shade on university studies. And I'll just yeah. throw in that they really help you. She had an idea of what she wanted to do and they really worked with her um, to figure out which classes would maximize either of her major choices. So um, I actually told her to do it. She felt like she had to have a major. So anyway, so that's that's my spiel for university studies. You, you are the exception, not the rule. I uh, know. I, I personally appreciate that. So um, I, I know I keep bringing up my own parents. I, I'm not a parent um, of a current, former, or future Bobcat. 
Um, but, but my parents just have had this like incredible impact, whether, whether they really meant to or not. Um, but Paul, one of the things that you mentioned earlier that I wanted to circle back to, you were talking about that balance, you, you know, with, with work and school and socialization and things like that. Balance is so key. And, and I, I still have really ingrained in my mind, uh, something that my dad told me moving a whole four blocks away from home. My dad drove me to drop me off at the dorms my, my freshman year. And when he was dropping me off, he told me, Anders, 40 hours, 40 hours a week. If you spend 40 hours a week and approach college like it's your job, there's absolutely no way that you can fail. And he was saying, you don't need to do 40 hours in the library or 40 hours in the lab, but you just need to be a college student for 40 hours a week. And if you are moving your motor that quickly, there, you're just so in the mix of it that you can't fail. It's going to lectures, like uh, the College of Business lectures that were talked about earlier. It's catching a concert, it's spending time in the library, but that activity and that finding that balance of doing as much as possible with the university, it just has you uh, sort of knee deep in the activities of it, which I think is so important, so. Um, I know we're at the top of the hour. We had just a couple of kind of those thematic questions that um, that I hope you all don't mind taking a couple of extra minutes uh, uh, speaking to. And this is looking forward now from a lot of our parent and family members that are joining. And this is something that I think is really, really valuable to give advice on from your own experiences. Um, there's two questions here that are sort of the same. And so I'm going to combine them. Um, Finding housing once a student moves off campus. Uh, I suppose I should explain that we do have all of our first year students live on campus for their first year. After that, it is a student's decision whether or not they want to live on or off campus. Can any of you speak to the, the strikes or gutters that any of your students experienced when they were moving from on campus to off if they've chosen to do so? I, I think you should start early. Um, uh, housing is a little bit tight in Bozeman and not inexpensive. Um, I think my wife said we spend, my son, we spend a thousand dollars a month, uh, sharing an apartment. Now that is right next to campus. I don't know if there's a closer rental. So I'm, I'm sure you can knock it maybe 30% off of that rent, but start early. Um, if you wait and all the houses start getting gobbled up, then you start to have fewer options and more expense. Cool, that, yeah, I, I think that's great advice is the early. Uh, how about anybody else moving off campus? Any wins or losses? Um, my son got very lucky his uh, sophomore year. He um, got in with a parent who had rental properties. And so he was like right, like a door down from the pickle barrel. Um, nice. and he lived there th the three, his three remaining years. And then, um, my daughter actually lived in her sorority house this year, which was also a blessing because it's right across from campus. And she is now in the throes of looking for housing for next year. Um, she's kind of a go-getter, so I know she can do it, but it is, um, you re they really have to stay on top of it. Cool. Um, being a door down from the pickle barrel, there, uh, there is an, uh, there is a chance that I also lived in that house once upon a time. Um, oh, just funny. to throw that out there. Yeah. So, um, let's see the, there was a question I saw either Emily or Anna answered this already. Um, so are any of you on that parent and family Facebook page? And if so, uh, it's a Facebook page, not an Instagram page. I know that that came up. Um, but it's the parent and family program Facebook page. Is that correct? Um, the one, um, I'm on the, the Bobcats, Bobcat parents, Facebook. Yeah, Bob, there's Bobcat parents. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you. That yeah. was, that was asked. Um, and then last but not least, and again, I know that we've, uh, we've taken more of your time than we told you we would, but this question uh, has a specific highlight that it has been asked numerous times. Um, and so I, I know how important this is. Um, what kind of safety measures does MSU take that made you feel okay sending your student to college? Um, you know, Bozeman community, our campus community, can you all talk about the, the safety and security that, that we provide that 
helps you feel comfortable calling your student calling MSU home? Uh, just real quick, going back to uh, what Doug had mentioned, the campus itself is a good mid-sized campus. Whenever we're there, we see security there. We see people there. Uh, whenever there's a long weekend coming up, you're sure to see an email come out from the university saying what the university is doing. Uh, we've never had any issues uh, whatsoever. And another step that Montana State takes because it's such an outdoor oriented university with kids going skiing, things like that. They have a ton of programs to make their make sure your student is safe and trained before they go out in the outdoors. Yeah, awesome. I know my daughter, her freshman year, she worked um, at one of the desks of the residence halls, and I know they're, they have, uh, I mean, pretty strict rules about who they let in and out of or into the residence halls. Um, and then I know there's an app I think that the kids have that gives security alerts and yeah. So I usually have, have it too. So if there's like, you know, anything, um, you know, you can get those alerts. And then I do remember from, I haven't been to the orientation in a couple of years, but I just remember being really impressed with the presentation that MSU has its own security staff. And I just, we have never had any issues with security, um, but I do know that the resources are there. Yeah, absolutely. The um, the app that was just mentioned for for anyone out there, it's called the Safe Cats app. Uh, you can buy it from your Google Play or your um, or your iTunes Store, um, and it's it's anything campus safety related. Um, and so, if it's a student that wants a a virtual escort or a virtual walk home. Um, then you can link uh, through GPS tracking and so that I can watch my buddy get back to his car or back to his residence hall. Um, you can, it's a one button push to get to the university's police department. We do have our own police services on campus and we're now actually opening MSU's own uh, fire department on campus, uh, which we hope we never need, but I would rather need it and not, or have it not need it than need it and not have it. Um, so we take safety and security very seriously. Um, one last link for Anna or Emily, if y'all don't mind. Um, we also just to lay eyes on it. We produce an annual safety and security report each year. Um, we, if we have hard copies in our office, if y'all ever want to stop by and get some, but we also post it on our website. We have just updated the 2023 safety and security report. That is all reported crime statistics on university property. And what you'll find is that it's not zero. If anyone ever tells you that that a college or university has zero crime, that that's just not the truth. Um, but we are actually proud of our safety and security report just because of the efforts that we take to ensure that it's something that we can be proud of. So I, I appreciate everyone who wrote in with that question. I appreciate you all taking a moment to, to answer. So. Um, so that's the end of our questions. And so now I'm fully going to uh, just put the reins in the hands of our panelists. Um, anything else, just advice, encouragement, um, things to think about for our, our incoming Bobcat family members. Um, you all have, have walked in the shoes. You, you've paved the path. And so uh, just anything that you all have to, to provide as, as sort of a, as a parting thank you um, would, would mean a lot. So um, not to put you on the spot, but Doug, can I put you on the spot? Yeah, please. Uh, the one thing I learned is orientation for parents. Um, I did not go to that when my oldest son started. I did it backwards. My youngest son uh, went to orientation in the middle of the summer, I think. Maybe it's June. But that was time and money well spent. You learn so much more about the campus and professors, even the classrooms. Just uh, it was an awesome experience. It's a couple of days out of your life and a little bit of travel. Um, but I think like the Schlee said, <laughs> I didn't see my son the whole time and he had an absolute blast, but so did I. It was incredible. That's my advice. Awesome. Thank you for that. That that's really, really good to hear. I appreciate that. Um, I have one parting advice. Uh, my daughter did the backpacking trip that was attached to orientation and my older son regrets not doing it. So if anyone is questioning um, whether or not their kids should do it. It's an amazing program. Um, and it, we did it in July. And so it got her like meeting and knowing kids to keep in touch with before school even started. Um, and then my second thing is that I will say has been also amazing is um, 
from a research standpoint, uh, Montana has a very strong research program that um, for science majors, I guess it's more, but both of our, my kids have been involved in research program and TAing and essaying. Um, so it's all those little extra things. I know it's the skiing and the fly fishing, but um, those are some other great ways to help kind of build their academic resume that are easily accessible at Montana State. So. Cool. Right on. Kind of random, but. No, I no, that's not <laughs> random at all. I appreciate that. Uh, and last but not least, our Florida, Montana, Virginia. <laughs> all over. Uh, what you got? You're all over the country, I would, but uh, I would say a couple of things. Uh, yeah. Going to what Doug said, just to stress it once again, man. Uh, Bozeman is a university town, and, in, and it's Montana State University town, and it is a ton of really friendly people. I hear that remark all the time from people that come in from out of state. It's what we saw, and it extends to the faculty. Uh, Anders and we've got Moira and president, all those, it just really focused on the success of the students, both in their studies, as well as their personal life. And you see it every day. You see the email, the communications, when you go to the university, it is awesome. And one of the things where our sons haven't graduated yet, but Leslie had shared her uh, son's success and holy cow, we hear those stories all the time from graduates to see the success that they've had. Uh, hop on the Montana State, you know, website and their, you know, Montana State is constantly echoing or I should say highlighting the success that their students are having once they graduate and it is amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Melissa, you want the mic? You want the... <laughs> no, I think um, just words of advice. Biggest thing I could say is let your, your kids really just need to be an advocate for themselves. Um, like going from introducing themselves to professors, putting themselves out there, making friends, meeting new people, um, and having that grace period. They, it's amazing to see when they get out there, um, they do find their people and they find their voice and they find themselves. And you watch your child when they leave, they're like, they're, they're a child, but when you go and you visit them, they have, matured and it is just amazing and to have that environment of msu with the support that they give these students it's you can rest assured and sleep easier at night i think because your your children are in very good hands on campus with everybody there they really want the best for your children oh man I so appreciate that. It's uh, the the community is something special. Our dean of students, Dean Kairos, will tell you it's the people. There, we have wonderful academic programs. We have every opportunity that a student could want, but it's the people that are the engine of this place that make it so special. So uh, I'm glad that the handshakes and smiles, the slow pace of life, um, we 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 kind of check all those boxes for welcoming people in from four blocks away from home or from all the way across the country. So. Um, my last slide, I forgot to transition to this slide earlier. Questions and answers, we just did that. Um, I want to keep in touch with you all though. Um, this is my contact information. And so um, we're, I mean, the fact that we still have nearly 200 people logged on for the entirety of, of the, today's presentation, that means the world to me, it means the world to our staff and, and to our campus in, in general. Um, there's going to be questions that come up and, and we want to be able to help out however we can. And so I'm going to leave this up for, for just a little bit. If you want to take a picture of it, you want to take my contact information down. Um, I am always around. I want to be in your corner. And so if it's a question on orientation, it's if a question on research opportunities or getting involved inside or outside of the classroom, um, yell at me. Let me know what your students are apprehensive about. Let me know what your students want to know about, and I would be more than happy to follow up with any information that I can. So um, for everybody who joined us from across the country, thank you a million times over for giving us your time this evening, particularly for our panelists. Um, the fact that you all want to continue to do this, to be involved with this Bobcat community, like you said, uh, Doug, I think you said it earlier, it's you are connected with this campus and, and for our attendees, you will be too. So um, thank you so much to our panelists for taking the time out of their evening to, to offer their insights. Thank you all for joining us. Um, and keep in touch. Let me, let me just know how we can help out. We'll look forward to seeing you in the fall. And until then, go Cats. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>